guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about vermicomposting, vermiculture, worms, and uh, what you can do with the castings once you uh, create them. Uh, my personal goal is to keep things out of the landfill, and so I feed them pretty much the leftovers of anything that I eat. Um, I have started to veer off into meat and eggs, but not a lot. Most of the time, vegetables and fruit. So the situation with this bin here today, this is my DIY bin that I made a couple of years ago. Made it out of three 10 gallon or 38 liter um, totes that you normally store things in. Drilled some holes in the top two layers. Made some aeration holes here on the side. And the type of worms that occupy this bin are my Uncle Jim's mix. Now that means that there is red wigglers, blue worms, and European night crawlers, and most recently we think there might be some rubellus in here, which are the ones that are kind of a dark um, black cherry color. All right, so step one, we are going to check out what we have, uh, what the worms have accomplished while I was on vacation. Now, if you haven't seen the other video, we made them burritos out of paper, burdock leaves, and kitchen scraps, and we wrapped them up and left them in the bin on level one and two for the worms to have some fast and slow food in there while I was gone. So we're gonna dig in here and see what we've got. So on this top layer here and in the, um, the middle layer, they got two burritos. So I am going to slowly move things out of the way. And one of the things, I don't know if you'll be able to notice, but there are an insane amount of cocoons in here. Um, just everywhere. I think you can probably see that. That's probably almost ready to hatch here. When they get that kind of uh, almond, you know, yellow-brown color, that means they're pretty close to hatching. So we're going to kind of slowly scrape things over and see what we've got. Hopefully we've got something left of the burrito. Now honestly, I don't remember what side I fed on. There's a little sprout here, so that is an indication that that's, this is probably the side I fed on. But I've been wrong before, and I'm probably going to be wrong again at some point. But you can tell these castings are absolutely done. And we kind of knew that going into the um, feeding before vacation, that we would probably be doing a harvest when I got back. Now, I was wrong. That is apparently not where the burrito was, or the burrito is be completely annihilated. Now, I left the top off of this because it was getting very, very wet. Now, I don't know what these sprouts are, but some kind of seed. Don't know. And that's fine. I just turn things over, and they will be eaten up again. So it looks like the burrito was over on this side, and that there is... Aside from the avocado pit and the mango pit, there's nothing left. So that was probably four to five weeks ago when I left on vacation. And uh, of course, if you've been following my channel, you know that I also got stuck in Italy um, when my husband got COVID. So the worms, good thing we really stocked them up on food because we were gone more than a week longer than we thought. So they've had enough food, so that's good. I'm pulling out the big pieces here because I have decided that we're going to do a harvest on this whole system here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a light harvest, which is probably the fastest way to um, separate the castings from the worms. And I just am going to restart this bin all over again. So we're going to separate everything, but I did want to see if there was any of that burrito left. So let me move this top layer off and we'll look at the layer below. Okay, so let's see, the burrito probably was on this side, which means the burrito should be on this side. We put them on opposing side, but look at these awesome castings. This is what you're going for. That is amazing. They're not sticky. Um, they're obviously too wet to sift, but look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Good worms. So, yeah, I'm seeing what looks to be a banana stem here, but I'm not seeing 
any of the paper, any of the burdock leaves. Um, I'm just seeing some banana stem and maybe an avocado rind. So we'll flip through both sides here, a little sprout of something, and we'll pull out the big things so that when we're doing the light migration, and I'll explain that deeper here in a second, but when we're doing the light migration, you don't want any big chunks of food basically blocking the light because then um, the worms will have something to hide under. So, looks like there's just a little bit more avocado pit or something over here. And we will pick that out, and then let's look at the bottom layer. So the bottom layer here is also super, super done and wetter than the other layers. And what I've been doing with this is I have been putting all of my long-term food, like um, corn cobs, and avocado pits here in the deepest part because it stays the most wet. So as you can see here, this is very, very, very wet. And um, funny enough, I don't put the worms down here. They come in from the other layers. So we are going to do a harvest today and separate the worms from the castings. And then we're going to reset the entire bin with new paper bedding that I have prepared. And then we're going to put the worms back. So that's, that's the plan for today, is that I'm going to get out all the big chunks here, because we don't want the worms hiding beneath them. And yeah, as I'm picking these out, there's some worms coming with, but that's fine. All of that stuff is going to go back in the bin when we are done harvesting. So just doing a little bit more picking, because otherwise then you get a surprise thing of worms underneath. Okay, pretty good. So this is very sticky. All right, I'm going to put my pile over here for later. And I don't know if you can hear them, but you can actually kind of hear them squishing around in there. Some people might think that's gross, but if you're watching, if you've made it this far in the video, you're a worm person and you're probably not grossed out by a bunch of worms squirming around in wet stuff. Okay, so now for the second part. We're going to pull these castings out and we're going to put them on the countertop here and we are going to do that light migration that I was talking about, which I'm not going to start with this one. This one might not even be able to light migrate because it's so sticky. I might just have to put this one on top of my um, large bin for it to dry out. But look at that. No food or anything, and there's, look at them, how happy they are in a worm ball. I did have a person ask me last time, you know, like, why are they balling up? What do they do in there? Normally when they... Um, find something good and tasty, they will all congregate together in that area with the tasty food and uh, hang out and uh, finish up the food. That's usually what motivates them is food. Okay, I'm going to get the other two layers which are dry enough to light harvest and I'll be right back. Alright, so here we are with layer number two. And there is a nice bright shop light right here. And I am going to take a break and these worms are going to dive down deeper into the castings. And then I will be able to scrape off the finished castings um, over and over and over again until I just have a pile of worms. All right, so let's give them some time. Okay, it's been about five minutes. I am going to very carefully pull off the castings that are mostly worm-free. This is not 100%, but you can see I've got most of the worms out of there, and I'm going to put the castings in a bucket. Now, anytime that there's the little baby ones or whatever, those will get caught in the last step. So as I'm going through here, we're just pretty much getting the big ones out of here. But we're going to go around the edges 
and over the top. I'm going to pick out any worms that are good size. And uh, there will be little baby ones, and there will be cocoons. But when I'm done doing this light harvest, I am going to take all of the finished castings, and I'm going to put them on top of my large bin that I call blue. And the castings can uh, dry out. And then also, any little baby worm that might still be in there can dive down and become part of the worm bin blue. So, in theory, we should not lose any worms in this process. And then when I sift through a very fine sifter, I will catch the cocoons, most of the cocoons. Some cocoons are so small you can't catch them. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this previously, but the smaller the worm at maturity, when it has a cocoon, the smaller, you know, the cocoon. And so some of very small blue worms um, are very tiny at breeding age, and so their cocoons are like a millimeter or less, and uh, so I'm not going to probably catch those. Right, so, like I said, this is not 100%. I know some people are like, ah, you left a worm. No, it's fine. We'll get them sooner or later. But then we just slowly make the pile taller here. Try not to compact it or anything, but just basically keep piling it up so that the worms die down. Dive down, not die down. All right, so I've piled it up again. And while you're watching the worms dive down, I have another pile that I'm working on on the other side. Some people that uh, don't do this with their hands do it with a paintbrush. Um, I personally don't see any reason to get a, a paintbrush dirty, but if you don't want to get your hands dirty, you can use a paintbrush to kind of sweep off the top layers. If you're liking this video, why not give it a muddy thumbs up, and if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know when all this craziness is happening, ring that bell icon. Okay, it's come to that time. We are going to weigh the worms. I'm gonna tear the 
the bucket. And so these are the worms that came from the bottom that were super wet. And I think we're about ready to see what we've got in here. This should be almost entirely worms now. Now I did lose quite a bit with the bottom row because that was so wet they're still hiding in some places. But for the most place, for the most part, this is, you know, entirely worms. So we're gonna flip that into there. Try and grab up worms without that much castings in them. I think this is a lot of castings. And then we are going to weigh it. Maybe. Okay. Two and a quarter pounds. Or 0.99 kilogram. And that doesn't count the ones that we lost. So that's what we are going to... We'll put that back in there now. Um, I have prepared the... I'm going to rescue all these worms that you see laying about. <laughs> when I do my cleanup, but that's going to take forever. So what we're going to see here, here's the bottom of the bin. We're just going to start that all over again. Put some bedding in there. And there's still some worms in there from before, but that's fine. Here's our second row. And our top row. Okay, and then let's get them some food. So push this over to the side. And we'll give them a, a good size feeding. This is a lot of avocado shells, so it's not really that much food that they can get to anytime soon. But there's bananas and avocados. Um, and then the bedding already has the grit in it. So we don't need any more of that. But we do need to cover that food up really, really well. There are still gnats in the basement. Okay, one more handful of bedding, and then we will we release the two and a half pounds, or two and a quarter pounds of worms. And I'm going to help them out a little bit, because these worms are probably pretty dang tired. They've done a lot of digging for little worms, trying to get out of all those castings for me. So now here we are, completely 100% reset on the DIY bin with the Uncle Jim's mix of Red Wigglers, Blue Worms, and European Nightcrawlers. Possibly uh, some of those rubellas, don't know. Um, and this is one of my most productive bins. We actually got five gallons of castings harvested out of this not including the, um, the bottom layer that was too wet to really um, sift or anything. So I'll let you watch these guys, and I will go dump that in Big Boy. Oops, I almost forgot. We need to uh, put the long-term food in the bottom. All right, hang on, worms. As of right now, there's no other worms or food. Well, actually, I guess there is worms. There's the worms that were already in there that are not wanting to escape from the corners. So we'll put that back down there. And that way, we'll know what was the old food and the new food. And there we go. 
the worms are still working their way down I'm gonna go ahead and cover them up they've had enough enough work today um, all right guys well if you like this I can show you a if you like this system I have an entire playlist of it that I will link right over there and if you want to see what happened when we set them up for vacation I will link that right over there all right guys thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day